those of you who are here for the first time and welcome back those who uh, are here frequently. Uh, we'll begin uh, with the invocation and the pledge to the flag and Council Member Al Ahern will lead us in that. Father, we have to be dearly, Father, we thank you for the day, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to serve our community, Lord, and we uh, pray your blessing on our community. Lord, we just uh, pray for wisdom and, and guidance from you, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Council members, let's uh, check in. We have six present for this meeting. We uh, have before us the uh, March 2nd minutes. We ask uh, if there are no corrections. I can't stand a little closer so I could kind of hear what's going on. Unfortunately, with all the people, it puts us within too, pro too close in proximity. <clears throat> I hope everybody doesn't die when they remove the masks. That'll be a dilemma. Don't you wonder they don't die? Bigger flies? No, you won't. We know why. I don't know why they don't have common sense. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just here. I mean, it starts with the way, way up. I heard you're getting a promotion. Congrats. Thank you. All right, now you can go. Is it my turn? I'm walking yeah. all the way up. Which uh, opens the uh, floor to other topics. The uh, this is about agenda items only. You will have three minutes to speak. Give your name and address. The floor is now open. My name is Tony Strazulo, six zero nine East Louise Avenue. I'm here to talk about uh, the ordinance. It's going to be on uh, page four of tonight's pamphlet, number six. And um, it's in regards to uh, the landscape and buffer and screening um, and the tree uh, requirements. A section in that, which is not in this brochure that's here, um, it states a change of two inch DBA caliper. And what's stated, at least online, from what I could see, and I don't know whether or not that is a, uh, a discrepancy in just how it was typed up or whether or not that's gonna be an actual um, written ordinance, but it says one half inch. I believe it should say probably one and one half inch. Um, I don't know if anybody has that on them that can see that um, or not. Um, so instead of one half inch, should be read one and one half inch. Also, there's a section in there talking in regards to um, trees, and they have a listing on there, and it, and it goes on to read. Um, what the different sizes of the trees get in height um, and their diameter as well. But I feel that somewhere in this ordinance needs to be verbiage stating how far apart these trees should be planted. Um, being an arborist, I come across a lot of times where trees are just planted way too close together. So instead of having two or three thriving trees, you have two or three mediocre trees because they're all fighting for the same sunlight, the same area, and that doesn't work. So by adding some kind of verbiage to this ordinance in relation to size of tree, girth, 
dimensions, how far apart they should be spaced out, I think would be a very good, wise uh, um, thing to add to your ordinance prior to. Um, another thing that I would like to speak about tonight um, is when people come up and speak, if they could actually speak into this microphone. You said an agenda item. Uh, well, it, it is because it has to do with tonight. Which, because part, of, which part of the agenda are you speaking about? It, it has to do with the, the room full of people that are sitting over there that would That's like to be able agenda. to you hear what's going on. on the agenda, if they're not, there's a time later in the meeting where you'll be welcome to speak about that topic. Are there any other agenda items you wish to address? I wish you would listen up, Gary. I mean, you know, we're talking about people being able to hear what you got going on. I mean, that's part of the rules and regulations to having a meeting like this is that they can actually hear what's going that's on, not item just that is not appropriate for this particular time. There is a time. Well, it would be a it would be a violation. So a violation is always so should be on topic. Thank you. And you can come later in the agenda when when you can address that issue. Are there any other uh, folks who wish to speak about items that are on the agenda today? Okay, no. Okay, no. I ain't going that easy. Six six eight inclusive to three six seven seven, as they are all pertain to uh, the uh, same type of topic with some updated language. We'll treat this as one. However, if someone wishes to address the uh, uh, an ordinance individually, you'll have the full three minutes to talk. But uh, we'll we will open this floor for. Uh, For the uh, public hearing for these ordinances and uh, uh, the uh, floor is now open and uh, is Steve or is there a staff member going to address summarize what these are uh, but we passed them on first reading the last meeting uh, the public hearing portion uh, is today and that uh, the floor is now open so I'll be quick uh, last fall the state adopted the most recent building codes and uh, under state law you're required to have a code that's within seven years of the current codes. Currently we're operating under the 2012 codes with the exception of the National Electrical Code which we adopted in 2018 and we adopted the 17 code. Overall these changes are minor in nature. Our inspectors have been talking with the contractors. They're all familiar with them. We don't anticipate that they will contribute to the cost of building in the community, because many communities already have adopted these and are just uh, following suit. Uh, Greg Ellison and Billy Hale work close together to make sure that the ordinances you know, work well work together and work hand in hand. And uh, at this point, staff are working at the community. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard in this public hearing on these items? See no one come forward, we'll close the public hearing portion and we'll entertain a motion that these ordinances uh, be adopted. Uh, uh, so and, and motion Ahern, do we have a second? And we have a second. Any questions or comments about any of, by the council on any of these items? I think, I think we had the fire marshal speak last time. Is there anything else you want to add? <clears throat> My name is Billy Hale, I'm the fire marshal in the city of Morristown, and, and not really, I mean, we do work, you know, the fire code and building code go hand in hand. I call those guys weekly, and they give me calls as well, so adopting the building code is just the right thing to do with fire code as well. State does the same thing, so that's... So this just assists you and makes, assists you and makes your job a little easier? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. All right, adopting them both at the same time is the problem. Are you. there any other questions or comments? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And these ordinances are, are adopted as written. Next, we move to, uh, we have the uh, resolutions today. We have three. First is resolution 19-21. <laughs> 
a resolution of the City Council of the City of Morristown directing payment of electric tax equivalent. Council is familiar, and the audience may not be, that uh, MUS pays to the city a payment in lieu of tax reflecting their assets within our community. This is an annual process. This has been approved by the Morristown Utilities Board. We recommend approval. Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? So moved. Motion Smith. We have a second. We do. Are there any questions? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion carries. Next is resolution night is uh, 2021. And this being a, a companion resolution for the city of Morristown directing payment of wastewater tax equivalent. As you indicated, this is very similar to the one you just adopted. It does have to do with the wastewater sewer system. Uh, again, this is part of the uh, process where we discuss this and transferring operation over to MUS that they, they agreed to make this payment. Uh, it is uh, very much appreciated and we'd recommend it. Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? So moved. Motion, uh, had to go. And we have a second. Any questions? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion carries. Next, we uh, have a resolution pertaining to a change in the civil service um, uh, handbook that we saw. I would like to mention this time, we have two members of our three-member civil service board with us. Uh, Mike Benick is here uh, with us, and, uh, and also Lee Parker, our chairman, is with us from the civil service board. Lee, we welcome you. And we have a resolution before us, 2121, the, the resolution of the City Council of uh, Morristown to approve the Civil Service Board's amendments to its public safety and standards for the promotion or the Orange Book. And this uh, uh, description, Lee, do you want to uh, maybe come address that? We have eight categories that we give points for for the motion. The only one we're going to be talking about is seniority. Uh, as it stands right now, we give five points per year for 20 years. All we're willing to do is just spread this out over the career of the firemen, because most of them stay more than 20 years. So we're not taking any points or adding any points in. And uh, we put this to the fire department. They came up with it, and we're okay with it. And I think Chief Taylor's up. Are there any questions that the council has of uh, uh, Chairman Parker? And Lee, since this is in the Orange Book, we don't. It does not have to go to Nashville, does it? No, this is to prove the city council. Okay. Okay. So. Are there any other questions? Uh, is there a recommendation this resolution be accepted? So moved. Motion centered, and we have a second. Any additional questions of, uh, of Chairman Parker on this before we vote? Just to clarify, this does apply only to fire personnel, not, not the right. police. The police department didn't ask for anything, so we didn't change it. Okay. It's right. only fire department. Are we, are we ready to vote? Let's vote. That is approved. Thank you, Lee. We have several ordinances to introduce on first reading today. The first being Ordinance 3678, entitled an ordinance to annex a portion of Hamlin County tax parcel ID that you see the number, and to incorporate the same within the corporate boundaries of the city of Morristown on North Davy Crockett Parkway. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor Chesney. This item comes to us, uh, or to you, from Mr. Roger Porter, representing RCCP. They're requesting that the city annex in full their property, which is located along North Davy Crockett Parkway, adjacent to Spring Creek Apartments. Um, the three and a half acre parcel was only partially annexed in 1995, with approximately three fourths of an acre left out. His intent is to develop the property into a retail tire store, which will closely resemble the other stores he currently operates. The plan of services includes Morristown Utilities, uh, who will be providing electric, water, and sanitary sewer service to the property. The applicant has asked that the plan of services state the portion to be annexed be brought into the city uh, being zoned as intermediate business uh, should the annexation be granted. And the next item that I will have in front of you uh, will kind of shed light on where we're wanting to go on this. 
Uh, the Planning Commission at their March meeting voted to forward the Planning Services and Annexation request on to City Council for approval. And I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Well, do we have a motion to this uh, to uh, accept this ordinance on first reading? So moved. Motion Smith. And we have a second. Are there any questions or comments from the council? Yes, uh, in your slide that you gave us, where is the uh, is all the property that's along that line, is that all some the same? Every time to the west of this blue line is in the city, which means all of this northern city, but it's just this little bit that was left out in 1995. Okay. They did a five-foot corridor annexation from the center line of David Crockett at the time, and they just left out a small portion of that property. Did they own that property behind, behind that uh, no, sir. They don't. No, sir. So we're not changing the zone. Does that zoning on that piece of property need to be changed, or is it? We're going to do that next, I hope. Okay. It's coming. Any other questions? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion is carries, and that ordinance will be set for public hearing on April the 6th. Next is Ordinance 3679. It's entitled an ordinance to amend the municipal code of the city of Morristown Appendix B, which rezones Hamlin County tax parcel, the ID you see before you from R2, medium density residential, to IB, intermediate business. This is on the Davy Crockett, North Davy Crockett Parkway. Lori? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. This, is, uh, this request is to rezone the remaining property that is in the city. Um, and it comes from Mr. Roger Porter, who's representing RCCP. Uh, as you can see on the zoning map, the entire parcel is highlighted in blue. Uh, that portion right below the red zoned IB um, to the north and to the across North 80 Crockett Highway, which is also zoned IB, that is the zoning uh, that Mr. Porter is asking for on this piece of property. As I stated before, if the annexation for the portion which was left out in the 1995 annexation is approved and comes into the city as intermediate business, then the entire piece of property will be uh, zoned appropriately for what they are going to use it for. We have a motion to uh, accept this ordinance. So motion to Ahern. And we have a second. Any questions or comments on this ordinance? That was my question. I just asked it one one item too early. Thank you. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries, and that likewise is set for public hearing on April 6th. Next is Ordinance 3680, Title of Ordinance to Amend the Municipal Code of the City of Morristown Appendix B, the rezoning of Hamlin County Tax Parcel Lots 1 through 11, uh, 2.073 uh, acres, as shown on the uh, subdivision entitled Eagle Ridge. This is from light industrial to uh, R2, that's medium density residential. Lori? Uh, yes, sir. This property request comes from Consolidated Storage LLC. They requested to abandon a portion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to run they have requested to rezone a portion of their property, which is part of 1907 Davis Avenue, um, from, and it's shown on the screen in pink, if you can see that, it may or may not come out clear. Uh, but currently, the entire piece of property is zoned light industrial. Uh, there's a warehouse currently being used for some type of design business, but the plan uh, with the rezoning of the portion that fronts East Converse Street is to divvy up that property into 11 lots and to build single family housing on it. A few of our um, contractors have been doing that lately, uh, getting some vacant property, smaller vacant pieces of property and uh, developing little starter homes on there. So as the entire area around this uh, warehouse is zoned R2. Uh, staff would uh, ask that it, re excuse me, the rezoning be approved and the planning commission did recommend forwarding the item on to city council for approval. And we have a motion to accept this ordinance on first reading. Move for approval. 
motion is centered. And we have a second. Any questions or comments on this one? Yeah, I do. If we're going to build, uh, the, the developer is going to build single family residence, why not? Mm -hmm. Why aren't we zoning at R1 instead of R2? Because of the lot sizes. The lot sizes will be um, roughly 7,500 square feet, and that is the minimum square footage for an R2 lot. R1 lots are quite a bit bigger. They require at least 15,000 square feet to have an R1 lot. And that, but it's not divided yet. It, no, ma'am. It's going. It will be going through the planning commission. Okay, so then, by doing it R two, he'll be able to divide it into seventy five. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <coughs> Both of the items that I had, they, they kind of go hand in hand. This item will go hand in hand with the next item, which will free up that property. And if you approve the, the rezoning to residential, they should be able to do it. Do we have a motion that this uh, ordinance be accepted on first reading? We already have it, okay. Any other comments? I lost where we were. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries. It is set for April 6th public hearing. Next is ordinance 3681. It's entitled an ordinance to close and vacate certain rights of way within the city on Barnard Avenue, which is a portion of Stillwell Avenue and a portion of the unimproved alleyway between Stillwell and Converse Street. Uh, yes, sir. This is kind of hard to understand, too, and I apologize for this. It comes from the same property owner. This request is from Consolidated Storage LLC, and they have submitted a request to abandon a portion of Stillwell Avenue and abandon in full Barnard Avenue, both of which are 40-foot rights of way. Uh, but Bernard Avenue, as you can see on the screen, is a 325 foot long rights of way, which starts at East Converse Street and ends or intersects into Stillwell Avenue. That portion of Stillwell Avenue to be abandoned will begin at its intersection with Bernard Avenue, and it goes uh, east west on the screen, and it's extended along the south property line of lots 12 and 13 of the Hoyts Addition subdivision. Um, the two parcels to the west. So uh, we decided not to close that entire section of Stillwell Avenue at this time. Uh, this request, as I said, kind of goes hand in hand with the one prior as uh, the developer, Consolidated Storage, is wanting to utilize uh, most of this rights away for the residential subdivision. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is there a motion this ordinance be accepted on first reading? So motion A heard. We have a second. Need a second. Got a second. Any questions or comments for Lori on this one? Hearing none, are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries as well and is set for public hearing on April the 6th. Thank you very much. Next is Ordinance 3682, entitled an ordinance to amend the municipal code of the city of Morristown, Appendix B, the rezoning of Hamlin County tax parcel ID you see before you. This from Heavy Industrial District to uh, R3, the High Density Residential District. This on Deering Road at Highway 160. Josh? Uh, yes, sir. So, as you just noted, this is a request from the property owners to rezone the parcel located at the northeast intersection of Deering Road and 160 from HI, or Heavy Industrial, to R3, our High Density Residential. Uh, this parcel is approximately 12.8 acres in size and is currently vacant. If the rezoning is approved, the owners have stated that they will seek to create a single family residential subdivision. And they did provide staff with a concept plan showing approximately 40 lots. It has Highway 160 to the south, Performance Food to the west, a single family residential unit and a cemetery to the north. And across Deering Road, you have a single family residential unit and Living Promise Lutheran Church. Uh, prior to any develop on, development on this site, though, the developer will have to submit a site plan that meets all city requirements. Staff believes that this rezoning request to a residential district would provide a good opportunity for residential development within the existing city limits. And most of the properties, as I noted, along this road and to the north do contain residential units. 
So staff recommends approval of this request and planning commission did vote in support at their meeting last week by an eight to zero vote. Is there a motion to accept the recommendation on this ordinance? So moved. Motion Pedigo. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any questions for Josh on this one? Yes, it's a similar question when I ask Lori. If we're doing single family residential here, why are we doing R3 instead of R2? Um, just because of lot size. They're looking at smaller lot sizes than what we require in the other residential districts. So they're looking at roughly, I want to say 6,800 square feet to I think around 8,000. I'd have to look at the plan, but um, just for the smaller lot sizes to maximize the number of lots in this, on this, well, on the existing parcel. What size house generally goes on a lot that size? Uh, okay. How many bedrooms? Um, knowing the developer, it'll probably be three bedrooms because um, from what we've told, um, it'd be D.R. Horton as who's looking at this. Um, and they tend to do, from what I've seen in other developments in, in the southeast, three bedrooms. Um, as far as square footage, I guess it just depends on how the house is laid out, whether it's one story, two stories. So, I ask that question because these are, I mean, I know we've redone our ordinances to allow this. So, I mean, it's, it's appropriate to do that, but it's, it's really, it's new in that we haven't had that many come to us to be approved. Uh, yes, and this is still larger than what we, our minimum size, because, I mean, they can go as small as 5,500 square feet, but they're not approaching that you know, small, as small of a lot. They're still, I mean, smaller than what we see in some of our bigger neighborhoods, but it's still larger than they could go to. I think you're right. It'll be a nice improvement on that piece of property to have the houses there. Any other questions? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And the motion carries, and that will also be a public hearing on April the 6th. Next is Ordinance 3683, an ordinance of the city to amend Title 14 Zoning and Land Use, Chapter 33, this being landscape buffers and screening of the Morristown Municipal Code. <coughs> Josh? Uh, yes, sir. So, the City Council may be aware, staff has been working over the past few years on updating our zoning ordinance. So, this month we um, got with our City Board of Culturists, Mike Hunt, um, to assist in looking into our chapter 33, which is landscape buffers and screening as we sought to update it. Uh, the major change being proposed is updating the recommended species of trees, shrubs, and ground covers. Staff is proposing to amend some of the recommendations of the current list based on disease, plant availability, and some of those being non-native to the region and just not surviving well, as well as a change in species of some of those that are on the current list. Additionally, as a result, staff is proposing adding trees to this list. Um, the updated list is one that will help the community by providing trees and other landscape that are native to our region, not as subject or prone to disease, and will provide a diversity of trees to the community. Uh, other minor changes include providing the correct definition of caliper, removing plastic and adding pine as components of the definition of mulch, and adjusting the minimum tree height <coughs> At plantings match the minimum caliper required in Evergreen, and that was this was recently brought up at the beginning of the meeting, and it was a um, clerical typo. It should be 1.5 inches um, of the caliper to match a six foot Evergreen tree, and I'll I'll adjust that in the ordinance. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Uh, staff believes that the proposed changes to this chapter will help benefit the community and developers as they prepare their landscape plans. Uh, you know we're. Eliminating landscape that are like noted prone to disease, non-native, hopefully this will increase the likelihood of them surviving and lessen the need to continuously replace landscape for property owners or developers. Uh, Planning Commission did vote and support this request by an 8-0 to zero vote last week. Is there a motion to accept this recommendation on first reading? Sure. Motion Ahern. Need a second? And we have a second. Any questions from the council on this ordinance? Yes, is this uh, would the buffer part that you're talking about be part of the uh, differentiating between commercial and residential? Uh, yes, sir. It's one use for the buffer trees. Um, if it's a residential or industrial abutting, or excuse me, commercial abutting residential districts or residential use, we require the evergreen buffer. 
and it was brought up at the I guess beginning of the meeting. Uh, our ordinance does state that um, canopy trees must be 15 feet apart in spacing, and these evergreen trees must be 10 feet. This was already existing in the ordinance. So, okay, my question is that I don't, that I'm not sure I understand. Is okay, if we, if if we're looking for something to buffer between a commercial piece of property and a residential area. I was under the impression that we were trying to almost make a blind between the commercial and the residential. But that's not the case. We're just saying that you've got to find a tree every 10 feet apart. Uh, yes, sir, that's where it's important. Is that really buffered between, between commercial and residential? I mean, the hope is you plant these fast growing evergreen trees and it provides a buffer. Um, but I mean, I'd, on this, I'd have to defer to our horticulturist. I mean, he's more well versed in landscape than I am. So, well, I, I don't. I'm not sure that I understand exactly what we're talking about. And, well, I've had people who live in residential areas say they're cleaning out a piece of property next door to me, and I said, yes, it's been changed to commercial. Well, there were trees, big trees there, and they cut all those trees down. And now they, when I asked them, they said they were going to plant small trees. That doesn't buffer. That might, I'm not sure what the terminology of buffer is. I, I use the terminology of buffer is if I have a buffer between me and you, then I don't hear you and I don't see you. And you're saying that a buffer may just be a tree here, a tree here, a tree there, that eventually in 20 years might block the view. Is that right? Um, that's where current ordinance reads, that's how they describe a buffer area, you know, the planting of evergreen trees. And that's should, should commercial, industrial buffers be more than that? Um, I mean, we, it can be more stringent. I mean, I would have to, like I said, get with somebody else on this to... Yeah, I see. I mean, I'm, I'm not arguing your point. Yeah, just, I'm saying that, that's myself. yeah, that's existing. Um, you plant a row of at least one, if not two, rows of evergreen buffer trees, in hopes that these are fast-growing evergreen trees and will block this commercial plan. Okay. And yeah, and it, I mean, as long as it's you know fairly recent plan, I mean, if it's you know something forty years ago, it probably won't have the side plan on it. But if it's fairly recent, I know, but I don't understand. Here, here's the yeah. thing I'm getting: a person lives in a house that is 65 or 70 years old, and somebody next to them has converted the property into commercial property, and they are required to put to make a buffer between that commercial property and that residential property. And we're saying to those people who lived in that house, you're allowed to cut all those big trees down as long as you plant small one and a half inch pine trees every 10 feet apart, and 20 to 30 years from now, or 15 to 20 years from now, there'll be a buffer. And that guy's going to be 110 years old. Uh, yes, sir. You see what uh, they're No, 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 I see, I see it. Yeah, I see it. We do have in the ordinance also um, opportunities to protect existing trees and have credit for those. But, I mean, if they go in and cut everything down, they just have to meet the current requirements right. of the zoning. I think a good example of what Tommy's talking about can be seen, and, and some of us will remember when Massingill Springs went in, and it was uh, a large, basically swamp area there, what it was, and the folks in Country Club Estates and Collins Drive uh, were concerned about a commercial land, the back of a grocery store adjacent to their streets. And what the developer did was plan, I don't know how many uh, white pines or, or what type of pine trees, and this was in 2013, so we've got almost eight, about eight years that have passed, you can see what they look like now. If you go back uh, on the road where you can see behind Food City that backs up the Country Club stage, you'll see how much those trees have grown quite a bit, and, and it, that's the kind of buffer. It's not a, a solid uh, 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 tree wall, but it's, you see how the growth of fast growing trees in a fairly short period of time are, are reaching that goal. But that's an example of, I think, what Tommy's talking about. The trees aren't that big when they went in the ground, but you can see how they've developed, how they've grown. But that's, I think we have an obligation to protect the people who are already citizens and, 
and live in an area, live in a residential area, and they've lived there for years, and then somebody comes along behind their property. You're exactly right. And that's the question. Yeah, and, and, and I think you're right. They don't need to, to live to be 110 to realize the buffer. I think we probably need to uh, require, a, so, and, and the horticulturist will be aware of this, and when we do the final site plan and all that can require a particular type of fir tree that's fast growing and and if they're 10 feet apart, it's gonna be a green wall in, in a fairly short period of time. I think we can. And my point is not about this particular situation. Uh, it might be something that we would like to take under advisement and look at and maybe eventually see if we need to change that. But as far as this, my argument's not with this one, that situation we're talking about. I mean, we can, we as staff, we can go back and look at you know, bring forth another amendment trying to strengthen the buffer, but on the spot, I, I couldn't tell you anything right off that. Are we making sense? Yes, and Are there any other questions on this item? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And this motion carries and this ordinance is set for public hearing on April 6th. The final ordinance on first reading we're dealing with today is 3684. This is an ordinance of the city of Morristown amending Title VIII, Chapter 2, Section 211 of the uh, Municipal Code uh, pertaining to beer. Council will recall that we had a workshop on this ordinance at your last meeting. Uh, the city attorney has been working with the police department to, to make modifications for the enforcement of the standards. In essence, it adopts by reference certain state standards, but the city attorney and chief overall are here. If you have any questions, the ordinance is recommended quickly. Do we have a motion to accept that recommendation? Move for approval. Motion to center. And do we have a second? And we do have a second. Any questions on this one? My uh, question, I know that we said that if it's if it's noted that it's Tennessee code annotated, and I was thinking about this, this is for the individuals who are selling the beer who should be very much under the code anyway. And it's not on the individual who's coming in. They should know what the law is as well. Correct. So, it's, but it's, tell me, tell us again how it's expanding it so you, it enforces it. Well, it's just making reference to any additional changes that the state could come up with as far as prohibited activities for beer permit holders, things that they have to do, requirements that they, that they may make. So just, just a kind of a catch-all provision, so to speak. So as those changes are made, they automatically become Correct. enforceable. Correct. Under that under that particular provision of the Tennessee Code, which is the one on prohib any any kind of prohibited conduct by the permit holders. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. 
that motion carries on first reading, also set for April the 6th at the public hearing. We move on to the awarding of bids and contracts, the first of which is the acceptance of the recommendation on request for proposals from Tennessee Turf Masters and Oak View Landscaping and Lawn Care to provide turf management and mowing services in the amount of $204,706. The next three items on your agenda excuse me, are related. The first step that we're considering now is uh, we saw requests for proposals for, for the services described, and then assuming that you accept those, those proposals, we'll move forward to contracts. So this is a, a pre uh, preliminary step for the next two contracts that will be recommended. Council may recall during the adoption of the current year's budget, we considered the addition of certain people and equipment in order to take on additional mowing requirements, the primary one being Fulton Hill Park. We opted instead to go with a one-year experiment of contracting for certain mowing services so we could free up some of our existing people and to, to allow the, uh, the areas to be maintained well by contract. This is a budgeted item. The, the proposals have been reviewed by a committee of five and recommended that uh, certain areas be given to one vendor and other areas be given to another. We would ask at this time that you accept the recommendation of the committee for the RFP and allow us to move to the next steps for contracts. Do we have a motion to accept that recommendation? So, motion, Pedigo. Are we just doing one at a time or you're asking us to do all three? Do the first one first, then we'll con individual contracts. And yeah, we do have a second. Any questions or comments? How did this fall under the law of public advertising? This what we did seek publicly request for proposals, we had three proposers that submitted proposals. Any other? Uh, go ahead. I uh, can't remember which one it was, but uh, this one, this first one pertains to the three parks. Is that correct? The, this, this is overall proposals. The next two contracts will talk about specific sites. So this is the overall. What you're being asked to do now is simply accept the recommendations of the rankings of the proposals from the committee. Tony, are you saying that 204 is actually the 85 and the 119? That's correct. The 204 adds the next two contracts. It's not that. three different numbers. That's, That's correct. Right. There will be two contracts and the total will be 204. Thank you. That was that was my question as well. Let me ask you, this, this go, this, um, as you mentioned, we were looking a way to make sure that we maintain our properties. And, and we're going to divide out how which ones are going to be um, mode by which individual, which company later. So is this part of the plan to address the the atmosphere, the appearance of the city? Yes, if, if you look at the, the RFP package, there are 72 identified areas to be mowed. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very small around welcome signs, for example, or, or entrance areas. Some of them are a little larger. The biggest one probably is going to be the uh, <coughs> Of Fulton Hill Park, we've got the, the median along Durham Landing is another area. So they're all identified and would be identified and assigned to a specific contractor in the contracts that would be considered the next two steps. And it said that you had done a benefit analysis? That's correct. We went and looked at the cost of what we're spending with our own forces to, to do this in terms of people and equipment, and it's about one hundred and sixty-five to one hundred and sixty-nine thousand dollars a year. So it's very comparable in terms of cost, and it gives us the opportunity to free up our staff to do other things that we've not been able to do. For example, I think uh, near near the airport will be the curb line maintenance. So it it is a new expenditure, but we're freeing up our current staff so that they can address other areas. There are certain components of these contracts that are simply extensions. For example, parks and rec. Uh, Turf maintenance for our fields is already something we've been doing. We're going on forward with that. So there's no change there. So it's a mixed bag of some continuing what we've done for a long time <coughs> and some, some new contracts. But it's uh, trying to be a comprehensive turf management and, and more management system. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries. Next is the approval of a one year contract for landscaping and mowing services with Tennessee Turf Masters, the amount $85,606. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to approve the contract for the landscaping and mowing services with Tennessee Turf Masters, the amount of $85,606. Second. 
Uh, this is the first of the two contracts. This one relates to largely to uh, uh, parts and rec facilities. The uh, uh, they are already doing our turf management on soccer fields, for example, and uh, we've been pleased with their service. There'll be some additional areas they'll be mowing, but uh, we feel like this is a very good contract. We'd recommend it. It's a motion to accept this recommendation. So we, motion Ahern. Do we have a second? Need a second. Got a second. Any questions or comments? We've pretty much covered that one. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. Now let's vote. And that motion carries. And we have the approval of a one-year contract for landscaping and mowing services with Oakview Landscaping and Lawn Care, this amount, $119,100. This contract focuses on a lot of our public facilities. As you see in the recommendation in your package, the, the lawn here in the front area, the plaza for, for this building, the, the downtown green at the farmer's market, the extensive area at Fulton Hill Park, and the medium at Durham Landing, those are all high profile areas that we want to make sure we have a very attractive presence. We feel like we've got a good proposal. The lion's share of the work will be in Fulton Hill Park. Uh, we, we've had good experience with this contract and we'd recommend approval. Is there a motion to accept this recommendation? So moved. Motion Smith. We have a second. We do have a second. Any additional questions on this one? So Tony, just so the 72 that are listed here, that went with number three or number two? No, I'm sorry. The 72 parcels? Yes, sir. They're, they're divided among the two. Divided among the two. And, and they are identified explicitly in the contract that there were 72 total. Um, it said somewhere in the document that this, the they would check with the superintendent who would then monitor this. Who on staff is that superintendent that's going to make sure they mow all 72 places. Well, the, they'll be divided among public work staff, which would be uh, Mr. Mr. Brown and Mr. Cup will be deeply involved, and of course, Parks and Rec with Mr. Price. Okay. And I appreciate your mentioning earlier um, Morris Boulevard, so now we're gonna have staff that's gonna be available to do the curb cutting along Morris Boulevard, because that wasn't mentioned in any of this. That, that is part of the intent with, with some of the people that were doing some of these mowing around the welcome signs and so forth will now have additional time to apply to the kinds of things we talked about there for the curb line maintenance. I would like to say that I've already seen some of that that result of the curb cutting on Morris Boulevard, and it looks good. Yeah, it, it's attractive. The problem <coughs> is it's labor intensive. It takes it's scheduling is a problem. Being able to free them up from some of these small projects will help a great deal to be able to, to really put an effort into that. But we have the right equipment now. We do have the equipment. Our problem has been getting enough people to operate the equipment. I didn't think we really, what is it, Paul takes four people to operate that? The more you do it, the less time it will take the next time. After the, the first cut's probably the, your hardest. Getting rid of the dreadlocks is the tough part. Dreadlocks. Once we go behind, <laughs> we'll get it done. So, yeah. Lots <laughs> push mowers, and then they have one, and all have the other, and they have problem solved. Don't give her any ideas, please. <laughs> any other questions or comments on this one? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries as well. Uh, next, we have the acceptance of bids for surplus properties to various bidders. This total $29,457. Council will recall this is a project we've been working on for some time. Uh, these are properties that were acquired through tax sale. Uh, these are about 15 parcels that had a redemption period of 90 days. The city attorney has been, been involved in uh, acquiring the property and helping us go out to bid to uh, to find uh, people that want to uh, acquire and maintain the property. 
we feel like that uh, there are about 10 of these lots that are probably buildable and we would expect to see them uh, uh, see some homes and some, some development on those. Others are probably going to be acquired by the adjoining property owners to, to simply uh, buffer their own lots. But in any case, we avoid the long-term maintenance need of unkept property, return it to the tax rolls. We think it's been a, a very good program and we would recommend approval of the uh, 15 bids that you see before you. Do we have a motion to accept this recommendation? So we have a motion by your hand. We have a second. We do have a second. Any questions or comments? Yeah. I think it shows that our ordinance is working. Oh, yes. Yeah. Putting things back on the, on the payroll, on the payroll, on the tax roll. You can, I think you and can we do have additional board properties board. that the redemption period will be coming around. We should see another phase of this here shortly. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. Yeah. And that motion carries. Uh, we have uh, next the acceptance of the contribution from Dick's Sporting Goods in the amount of $1,500. This is a contribution to our Parks and Recreation Program. If I remember correctly, this is the third year they've been able to do so. It is in good support of our program. They've been good partners to work with. Mr. Price is here, but unfortunately he uh, is in the, the room across the hall. But if you'd like to ask any questions, we can get Craig over here to respond. Okay. We have a motion to accept the acceptance. So moved. Motion center. Do we have a second? We do have a second. Any questions or comments? I want to thank Express Appreciation to Dick Sporting Hood. They've been a good corporate citizen here, and we, we hope they're... Uh, their investment in the community is uh, um, is reaping uh, benefits as well for them, but we appreciate this annual contribution. Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries. Next is the approval of a memorandum of understanding between the city and the Knoxville Knox County Community Action Committee for Administrative Services. Council will recall that we recently were very pleased to receive a big cardboard check for the home grant that would allow us to go in and uh, rehab uh, eligible homes in the community. KCAC has been working with us in a very similar program with our renovation of homes with the uh, Community Development Block Grant. It's very much a parallel program, very similar types of services. They are expert in managing these types of grants and these types of projects. We feel like they're a good match will allow us to get a good benefit from the grant. We would recommend approval. We have a motion on this recommendation. So moved. Motion Smith. We have a second. We do have a second. Any <coughs> questions or comments? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion carries. Next is the approval of the purchase order to Temple Incorporated for the purchase of traffic signal cabinets. It's about $14,356. As you're aware, we have a number of cabinets throughout the system to control traffic signals. Unfortunately, they sometimes come into conflict with automobiles that leave the roadway. So we need to maintain an inventory of parts. That's the purpose of this purchase order is for an inventory of spare parts. It is a budgeted item we'd recommend approval. Do we have a motion of the recommendation? So we motion A Hearn. We have a second. We have a second. Any questions? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion is approved. Next is the approval of a proposal with LDA engineering for services during the construction in the amount of six thousand dollars, resident project representative services in the amount not to exceed 40000 and record drawing services in the amount not to exceed $3,500 for Wayne Hansard Park Drainage Improvements Project. Council will recall that we recently awarded a construction contract for this drainage improvement in the Wayne Hansard Park. Uh, LDA has been the engineer of uh, record for design. They are helping us with the management of the project. This one related to the other two we have a not to exceed number. We don't think we'll get close to that number because we'll be able to be more efficient with these projects going on concurrently. They can, can allocate their staff time and split them among projects. The not to exceed number is there simply if it were a standalone number, we feel like we can certainly beat that price 
It's a service we need, we recommend the program. Is there a motion to accept that recommendation? So moved. Motion of center. We have a second. We do have a second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion carries. Next is the approval also with the LDA engineering for services during construction in the amount of $8,000 and resident project representative services in the amount not to exceed $40,000 for the North Cumberland Street Improvements Project. The explanation for this project is very similar to the other one. The only change is the location. The North Cumberland Project is the retaining wall at Fulton Hill Park where we've had some failure of the slope we'll be feathering that slope back into the park. Again, we feel like we get a good service, we'd recommend approval. Is there a motion to this accept this recommendation? Motion Pedigo. Do we have a second? Need a second. Got a second. Any questions? Hearing none, let's vote. And the motion carries. And finally, we have the approval of the proposal also with LDA Engineering for services during construction. The amount for this one, $10,000 in resident project representative services in the amount not to exceed $40,000. This for the West Main Street drainage improvements project. Again, this is a storm drainage project. We have awarded a bid for construction. Uh, the one difference with regard to this project, it is, is funded by a grant from FEMA. It was based on the erosion of the uh, banks along the railroad track there on that section of West Main. Again, we need the services. We recommend approval. It's a motion to accept this recommendation. So we motion Ahern. Need a second. Got a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion likewise carries. That concludes uh, this portion of the agenda. Under new issues, uh, we have some uh, uh, promotions in the police department. Uh, Chief Overholt, uh, this is yours. Thank you, sir. I'm requesting to be allowed to make promotions to backfill several positions, and I'm prepared to make recommendations for those positions if you wish. First, on the roster of lieutenant, do you have recommendations there? Yes, do you wish me to do these separate or do just do both? Do both. My recommendations of the two lieutenant positions would be Craig Jarnigan and Kenneth Hinkle. We have a motion to accept Chief Overholt's recommendation on Craig Jarnigan and Kenneth Hinkle. So moved. Motion center. Do we have a second? We have a second. Any questions of the chief? Are we ready to vote? Let's vote. And that motion carries. That means Sergeant Hinkle's stripes will change on his uniform yes, over here. Okay. Well, so what is his workload? We'll ask Castle to recognize the change in the title. <laughs> All right, next. For the uh, two sergeants' positions, sir, I would recommend Travis Stansel and Diana Morgan. Is there a motion to accept uh, the recommendations of Travis Stansel and Diana Morgan? So motion Pedigo. And we have a second. Any questions of the chief? Hearing none, let's vote. And that motion carries. And the uh, a third category. Yes, so the corporal position, I had originally uh, requested two, but at this time I would like to uh, do one corporal to some interdepartmental changes that are taking place and that will affect that. And at this time, my recommendation for that one corporal position would be Matt Stewart. Matt Stewart. Okay, do we have a motion to accept the chief's recommendation? Senator. Motion to center. And we have a second. Any questions of the chief? Hearing none, let's vote. And Matt Stewart uh, is uh, moved to corporal. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, you Chief. And we get to the city administrator's report. <coughs> I looked at the, uh, the length of the agenda. I looked at my available hours, and I'll be extremely brief today. If we find ourselves sandwiched between the Ides of March and St. Patrick's Day, I don't know we have a good name for the 16th, so we'll just smile and move along. But I did think we had an excellent groundbreaking for Morristown Landing. I think that uh, 
There's a lot of excitement in the community, I believe, that we're going to see a, a great deal of continued uh, excitement. Can I go as last? The facility comes out of the ground and we begin to move for a while. Yeah, so whoever else would like to. I you're equally pleased and we're, we're very excited about that. seeing this project move forward and move into fruition. The only other thing that I would add is that uh, we have scheduled following the regular meeting a double header workshop. We'll have a discussion of the uh, proposed modifications to the ordinance regarding animal control, which are relatively minor, and we'll hear a report on employee benefits. And those, those will both take place after the regular meeting. And that's what I have to Thank you, Tony. Uh, we uh, open the floor now for any comments from any member of the public who uh, may have a topic of any uh, particular topic that they believe needs to come before the city council. Again, you'll have uh, three minutes to speak. This is not a question answer session, but uh, you have three minutes to express your views and items and uh, the council and, and mayor comments will follow. Uh, the floor is now open. Paul Sordino, um, address is 510 Hedrick Street. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. Paul Sordino, and address is 510 Hedrick Street. Um, <clears throat> I believe, you know, the homelessness needs to be addressed. We need some help. You know, there's a lot of us out there. There's over 300 homeless that are sitting there struggling. And everything, you know, the farmer's market, being taken from the people that feed and you know we're not here to hurt anybody we're here to try to better ourselves you know get jobs people get stranded here you know and become homeless or you know fight you know whatever it may be but you know i think as a city and you know we need help we need a new home shelter we need pretty much help from people to help us not struggle. And, you know, I've been homeless a couple times and struggled getting jobs, lose a job due to COVID, you know, whatever it may be. So, and, you know, maybe open up some of these abandoned buildings to, you know, help us out. You know, there's a hospital sitting up the road here, just nothing going bye bye. And you know, I just <clears throat> think it should, you know, maybe think about doing another, you know, day like a day center, like the Oasis was something. You know, we can get when it's cold, we can get warm, and you know, just be around people that we know and trust. And that's pretty much my, what I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Who's next? I'm Jennifer Clark. I get my mail at 510 Hedrick Street here in Morristown, but I'm homeless. And I, all I want to say is, the home, I've been homeless off and on for, since 2013. And I know how hard it is being homeless, not having the resources to get like off the streets. And with our, I know there's a couple of ministries here in Morristown that has been feeding the homeless on Saturdays and, and Wednesdays, they've been told to move away from the farmer's market pavilion because they were given, they were giving away food to the homeless so they can eat. I lost quite a few friends because of them being moved. And it's hard. Us homeless not here by choice. We're not wanting to be here. It's just hard to find the resources to get off the street. And plus, we need another homeless shelter. And that's, 
is turning away from a lot of people that don't have a Tennessee ID. Granted, I don't have a Tennessee ID. I have a Maryland ID, but it's just a copy of it. It's just hard. I don't know what else to say, but the homeless is not bad. People look at us homeless and tells us, oh, you're alcoholics, you're druggies. A lot of us is not alcoholics and druggies. We're not wanting to be here on the streets to be homeless. We're not choosing to be. All I can say is Sergeant Hinka knows me and Paul. He sees us every day. Us homeless need the help. Instead of pushing us away, help with resources. Ministries goes out, feeds the homeless, so the homeless can eat. Only one that feeds 5.30, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, is daily bread, but they don't feed Wednesdays and Saturdays. These ministries do. They're not selling the food, they're giving it away to the homeless so we can eat. We're not hurting nobody. We're not trying to. All I can ask you guys is please help. Thank you, Jeff. Hey. I'm not making faces at you guys. I have a chronic motor tick disorder. Just please help. That's all I can say. Jennifer, thank you for your comments and sharing those with us. Who's next? So this is, this is uh, we'll probably have some comments at the completion of the public comment. Uh, this isn't a question and answer session, but uh, we are, for all that you, uh, questions you ask, there'll be a time when we can respond to those. Yeah, but I know that I used to be homeless too, sir. And I used to get chased off a lot of places. There was no reason for it. Because I'm not starting a fight. None of the homeless are starting a fight, and none of them are causing any kind of problems. But yet, when we go to socialize or try to get some help, we're getting chased off. And I don't really understand that situation because we're here. I mean, none of us, a lot of us is not choose to be on the street. A lot of us is there not by choice. We were forced there. But yet when we go to try to get some help, we're getting chased off. Like we're, we're, we, it, it, we don't belong there. And we're human beings just like you or her or anybody in this room. And all we address is to treat us as human beings. That's all I'm about to say. Thank you, Lisa, for your comments and sharing that with us. And we'll we'll address those concerns. Who's next? <clears throat> Rob Burke, 720 White Oak Circle. 
Um, as you've heard about the recent uh, concerns with some of the farmers market, um, this is partially in relation to that, but also a little bit different. Um, so you know about the ministry that was looking to feed the homeless. That's one um, topic for, uh, to, for discussion regarding the farmers market. Um, Title IX, Chapter 2, Section 203 requires a permit to be obtained. However, I'm unable to find a specific cost entitled to that. Um, in experience, it, someone has told me that it was $150 for a nonprofit, $300 for a, an individual, um, but I have not been able to find that specifically written. Section 205 of this same ordinance says that farmers and vendors shall clearly post prices on all produce or items being sold. I believe that if there's an ordinance that says that everything must be priced um, very clearly for all to see, that we must also have in the ordinance priced very clearly for the citizens to see what that looks like. Section 207 requires minimum liability insurance to cover personal injury, product liability, and property damage in the amounts of at least $500,000. I have called six different um, insurance agency providers here in town today. Several of them were unable to give me any type of quote, said that they did not do that. They didn't know anything about that. I was able to um, get in touch with a few that said, okay, we can do that. However, we need very specifics in regard to it, even be able to give you a quote. So some of those specifics were things such as estimated attendance, specific risk factors that were associated or could be associated with this and in experience from speaking to people that have reached the uh, and tried to attempt to get this um, that insurance at minimal was $150 so therefore we're looking to possibly ask someone to spend $300 to $450 um, for use of the farmers market when section 206 um, uh, which I believe that this um, farmer's market is intended on being a place for community, whether that is so ministries can come in and feed the homeless and do that good work, whether that is that we want to have an event like we had uh, this past weekend at the Mardi Gras, things like that bring this community together. People have been at some level forced to be remaining in their homes and separate from people for quite a bit now, and people are ready for some type of community yet again. So I think this is an opportunity that we need to do so. Section 206 states, this ordinance will be reviewed annually. This was on 216.16. Upon review of the meeting minutes, please tell me if I'm wrong at some point, but this has not been reviewed since 717.18 and none since then. So I respectfully ask council to review the ordinance that has already been agreed to do so and make the necessary changes to follow uh, to allow the farmer's market to be a place for community as it was intended. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council? <clears throat> I'm Denny Fields. I I'm sorry, your Denny, first name? Denny. I reside at 1026 Lincoln Avenue. As you have heard from three of the people that I do minister to, and there's another one back there who will not speak. I am the founder of Pray Ministry, and our purpose is to feed and clothe the unfortunate in our city. Um, I've come here today to address my concerns about the present and upcoming ordinances for the farmers market. Now, I will say by the Chamber of Commerce that they are reviewing all these ordinances and they will be bringing it to you all.
My name is Tony Strazulo, 609 East Louise Avenue. It's not easy to sit up here and hear the grievances of people of the community. And this is just a few of them. And, you know, we can tell when you're aggravated, especially you, Gary, you breathe real heavily into that mic. You know, we don't expect everything to just be all flowers. Okay, there's... A lot of times there's thorns on those flowers. I'm here to talk in particular about part of the ordinance that states that there is no religious groups allowed at the farmer's market. Now, you're saying no religious groups allowed at the farmer's market, and that's in the first constitution has to do with religious. Okay? And we just now, 35 minutes ago, spoke about spending money on the maintenance of the grass and turf at the farmer's market. So the public is paying for that property to be maintained. Yet you guys have these restrictions against the public and the citizens. That area inside of the actual farmer's market was built with the anticipation of local farmers within 100 miles. And some of them I'm sure come from a little bit further than that, but th that's not local, okay? We also, it was built with the anticipation of people who garden at home, do crafts in, in their garages on their free time, to have the ability to go somewhere to set up. Then you're saying, if you want to come and sell your little bit of stuff, maybe a couple day, times a year, you have to pay and carry this insurance, and you have to also pay for your space. Not only do you have to pay for that, but the city has to be additionally insured for $500,000. So if you have 10 vendors out there, that all adds up that those people are not utilizing a $500,000 little space. That just seems absurd. It seems absurd to even need to carry that amount because you can go and you can to any parks and regulate uh, parks and rec area and you can rent a pavilion. There's a fee for that. Then there's a cleanup fee. If you don't clean it up, you don't get that money back. But you don't have to carry an insurance to go in to utilize that area. And nor should the small person need to. Now, maybe there needs to be something in the ordinance that states if you're going to use it, you know, over 12 times within a year, then maybe you have to utilize some kind of insurance. But to not allow religious groups to utilize that property just kind of seems out there this is supposed to be the bible belt it's the bible belt because we're not united everybody turned over their backs and went and started something else we need to start being united here for the people thank you Thank you. 
request other than Gary. You other council members could request to have an item put on the agenda. I'd like to ask you to do that. Find out whether Gary and Tony will allow that. Let's have a vote. We're talking about we the people and you represent the people and you ask people to vote for you. Do something for them, something that is so easy and yet is so profound in, a, in another way in that it shows a tremendous openness and concern about people who are sick, who work on the days of your council meetings or the time, who are handicapped or have other difficulties or of course with COVID right now. If we're hopeful we gone, but the handicaps, the sickness, the work, the children's activities will still be there. So let's take the meeting, post them on your website, put them on the cable channels. Check with the county, it's really very easy. Check with other counties and cities. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? Hearing none, we'll close this portion of the meeting and we'll go to comments from mayor and council members on any particular item. Um, I do want to make a couple of things here. Uh, the uh, uh, concerning comments that were brought up in the uh, group today. There are a number of organizations in this community, uh, and this city helps fund many of those private, nonprofit social service organizations which does provide service of food and warm and uh, shelter and clothing uh, and uh, job uh, preparation and interview skills for folks who are, are either homeless or in uh, economic situations that would require that assistance. And uh, we, we uh, uh, do provide funding for most of those each year, almost a quarter of a million dollars that we put into social service agencies in the community. There are also church groups who provide uh, food programs and they do it at various locations around the city and there are a number of places where that service is provided and they're allowed to operate. The farmer's market is not one of those and the downtown green is not either. There is not a uh, ordinance currently that is going to be passed uh, changing anything to the farmer's market, but the existing ordinance that does pertain to the farmer's market uh, has uh, certain descriptions and programs that to be allowed there to, uh, and they are there for some public protections, and they are regulated in their usage, and and we uh, found that to work quite well for us. So as there, there is no discriminatory practices on either religious groups or political parties, and those are two events that uh, we do not have there, and if. I should mention that as we speak, and I'm not sure it's been publicly announced yet, but there is a uh, two buildings of significant size and radio center that have been donated for uh, specifically for development of a warming shelter for folks who are homeless, who need uh, a place to shelter and to stay warm and out of the elements, and would also provide a large food bank. I think that public announcement is coming. Uh, but that is also in the works. So I think the, uh, the concerns that were brought were certainly uh, well uh, understood, but I, I'm speaking for the mayor, the council members can uh, speak for their comments as well. I want to uh, bring up uh, the fact that once again, the city of Morristown has been recognized as an official tree city, USA. We've had some discussion on trees and uh, buffer zones today, but in order to uh, uh, be a tree city, you have to meet four requirements. You have to have a tree board or a department, you have to have a tree care ordinance, and you have to have an annual <coughs> community budget for forestry, and you have to have an Arbor Day observance. And, and our city, we have a, a full-time horticulturist who is a staff member here, Michael Cup. I just want to pass along a, a pat on the back to Michael and the city of the tree board for once again achieving uh, the the uh, Arbor Day Foundation naming us as an official tree city. And the that's bare the minimum. Aaron likes to speak the question 
about the insurance that is required, and that is required of the city by MCAS and our insurer, which is risk management pool, now PEP. I think Tony can address that, that we're required now to have in activities that the public participates in, like the runs where you have the uh, different fundraisers and things like that. Am I correct? That's a, a condition of our coverage and a recommended best practice. It protects the citizens of the community from these types, from potential losses from these types of activities. And as we know, we're a contentious society. There tend to be a, a lot of lawsuits. This simply covers the, uh, the citizens from the lawsuits from these sorts of charitable activities. I'd also say that a lot of uh, churches that work and uh, provide things for homeless Whatever. Uh, a lot of times the insurance from the church can be carried over for a very little expense. It doesn't have to be a large amount of money to be able to carry that over. I believe in the city, oh, that's what we have recommended to individuals when they're sponsoring some of these activities, that they can get insurance, uh, couple that with their current policies, their private policies for a day or two or however long it's needed. I think also we have, uh, uh, we, uh, and the insurance applies to this, when you have a church group, it needs to be verified that it is, is actually a church, with a, that is a chartered church or in some are incorporated, but actually a, uh, folks will come for projects and declare themselves to uh, be a church when it actually uh, just, uh, uh, it needs to be verified in some type of uh, fundamental organized group uh, that is, is chartered. So uh, that, that's another item that uh, our insurance uh, provider requires. And that, that's again, for the protection of all of them. Yes. My understanding of the homeless from having been the ones to fall through the cracks. And, uh, and I think Alex has been trying to address it. Many of the homeless can't stay in a home and we are in communication with those organizations that are providing uh, hard services. I would agree. We, there, is, there is a problem, and we do need to address that. It will be coming up in budget time, and we can talk about uh, the services that the individual and organizations that we fund, how that can be handled there. Uh, so it's something that is, uh, as the young lady said, it's not by choice. We understand that. And I know that a lot of uh, individuals have depended upon the library, which has had to be closed during COVID, as have a lot of other places that are not available to be able to stop in. So it's something that I believe the council that you can see that we will be talking about it more. I would like to see us, uh, the council, get a report from the city administrator to whatever department needs to be done about the accusation that people who are in the park using the park for the park purposes are then asked to leave. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that meant, but uh, certainly something that needs to be looked into. Well, that, that's a good point right there. I, I, I was listening to that. Talking to the homeless in the Bill Washington place, I asked them about the police department and how do they all come in contact with the park. Probably they said the police department to be a little accusation that the police were maybe not treating them properly. So I just like to have an update there, Chief. I will we'll have, be happy 
to look into it and give you a report. I think there's some confusion. Downtown Green is not really a park party event space at the farmer's market. There may be some uh, misunderstanding about uh, what the, the purpose of the facility is or how it's managed, but I'll, I'll be happy to look into it and give you more well, detail. I just want to make sure the, the, the accusation was made that it was in the while we're in the park, using the park for park purposes, that we're asked to leave. So if that's the Green or if it's Fred Miller or if it's any of the other parks, I think that needs to be looked into. My understanding from limited knowledge at this point is that they're referring to the downtown Green, which is not treated as a park per se, it's part of the event space of the farming park. Are there any other comments, council members, Mr. Bennett? Uh, yes, Mayor Mayor. Um, another park that we've had added to our inventory is the Jolly Park, and I would like the council to consider our going ahead and putting some type of a sign up there where the Jollies have donated uh, to build the park, a turnkey park, and on the city property, and if we can look into that and be sure that we go ahead and acknowledge this is the future site. Uh, and it's dedicated, and I think we ought to dedicate that area to the Jolly family for their contribution to the city. And um, we can discuss that further, but I do think we need to acknowledge them because I believe, I don't think Craig is here, was it to be finished within a year? Is that correct? There are some uh, foundational issues we need to address, one of which is the agreement between us and the Jollies with regard to the donation of how that will work. And there are some, some issues with reviewing with regard to uh, the property itself. So there'll be some, some paperwork that needs to come to you before we, we go forward with a coming soon type sign, but I think that's certainly uh, available in the near future, but not immediately. And, um, I've had some contact with the planning. And this would just be acknowledging uh, that, you know, what's coming and who is giving it to us. I, that's a good point. So the city comes down and says thank you for that. And um, I've had some questions. I saw that we're opening the parks now. I have questions about tennis courts. And so the tennis courts are going to be as, as, as they are now for this next season. Is that correct? I mean, we're not going to have a chance or go into the refurbishing as we've had in the budget to do. The, the resurfacing of the tennis court it is on hold as a project pending some of the other things with regard to how the parks will be, be operated in the future. We talked about the possibility of additional entrances and facilities and, and that, that's not resolved as of today. I thought we had resolved that. Right? Well, I think we, we put it on hold, but I don't know that long term we looked at the, the impact of it. That's what's holding up the refurbishing. Well, refurbishing parks is a budget constraint, a timing constraint. There are a number of issues that will hold that up and moving forward at this point in time. But it's something we do need to discuss and looking forward to the next budget cycle. Um, then we need to let the east and west and others that have uh, tennis matches that are coming up know that that's, I guess they'll get the word pretty soon that they're not going to have as many courts as they need. Are there any other items to uh, come before the council? If not, I'll entertain a motion that we stay at an adjournment. We're adjourned and uh, we have a brief work session. What's up, man? You got promoted? Yes, sir. It's about dang time. <laughs> Thank you, sir.
All right, so thank you for joining me for another Lakeway Audits City Council meeting. Um, as you can see, some people, um, especially Bob Garrett, he usually doesn't really say too much. He uh, mentioned something about um, you know the homeless and how they need help, and I, I believe that's because um, Rob got up there and said something. And Rob is running for that same that same chair. So I, I believe that if Rob didn't get up there and mention anything about, you know, the homeless and so on and so forth, I don't think he would have got much out of Bob Garrett either. So Bob Garrett needs to go. He needs to change. Um, we got somebody that would like to speak here. Yes, I would like to um, address some of the things that were brought up in their comments. I am a part of Transformation International Ministries. I am a, a actual 501C. I'm not pretending to be a church. I am an actual ministry. They say there's city funded programs. The city funded programs are not reaching the ones who really need the help. Just as someone spoke, there's too many falling through the cracks. They said that there's churches helping to provide food. There is one church providing food in this town for the homeless. It's a, and my ministry. My ministry feeds them on Wednesday night and Saturday night. And we provide a meal for Sunday lunch so that every meal is covered in this town for the homeless. That was the purpose of our starting then, is that every homeless person has a chance at every meal throughout seven days of the week. Um, they said Farmer's Market is not a place for certain groups. Um, I've read the Farmer's Market rules and stuff, and it does not, it does not exclude us. The Farmer's Market is all about selling stuff. It says no alcoholic beverages are allowed and yet um, on, they had a beer festival there they had a beer fest that's why i was looking for the date they had a beer festival um september 28 2019 where all alcoholic beverages were allowed they also had this marty howl on march 13th where they allowed pets which are not allowed they allowed solicitation which meant that they it was a fundraiser or, so we had pets, we had fundraisers, but yet that's a gift to the Harmon's Party. We're not allowed to have alcohol, and yet we had an actual beer thing there. Um, I really feel like Farmer's Market has become what they want it to be, and not, you know, it's like, and he also said there was not going to be any new ordinances. There is in the next, the uh, Chamber of Commerce told me in the next two weeks, New ordinances will be written and will be brought before this council. Yes. And I can about guarantee you there's several of us that will be back to read those ordinances and to comment. I, I, I was told the same exact thing when I went to the Chamber of Commerce that they it will be on the agenda um, and they will revise that. Um, as you all heard today that we are paying to maintain the grass that was part of the 200 and something thousand dollar bid. Um, so we are already funding that and um, I requested to look at all of the um, grants that were given in towards that to see any verbiage that is on that. They are not made available. Um, I will be able to come here, um, they're processing it and um, be able to take a look at that. But look, they say do not assume. When you assume, you make an ass of yourself. And Gary, Mayor Gary Chesney said that these groups are not licensed, they're not accredited, and look, they are. Maybe they're not all are, but some of them are, just like this ministry right here. You don't have to have a big church in order to provide. And I have met people that have struggled because of different reasons. There was a guy, he had a job lined up at, at McDonald's, but he couldn't get black shoes and he couldn't get black pants. So he couldn't show up for the first day of work. Um, you know, we need to provide a, a place for people to be able to take showers, get a meal, get a clean pair of clothes. That way, when they are out in public, they feel more comfortable and they're more accepted. So this was a good meeting. Um, we will get you more information on the next meeting. It should be in, in a month. Um, as a matter of fact, we can go and get a date right now for you. Hey, did you want to say anything else? Um, I just want to say that it's very obvious that the two people 
there's the two places in this town who are wanting to feed these people are established 501c and I'm tired of the city thinking that oh it's just a group of people without at least looking into it and saying hey and I'd also like to get a better definition of what a park is because um, we say the green was a park now they say it's not a park it, it is a confusing uh, piece of uh, property yes thank you mm -hmm. so let's get you all that uh that next meeting it'll be right up here and the next meeting is going to be oh it's not on that sheet there no so it's not here okay so it'll be april the sixth will be um for public hearing that's going to be the work session so you can come out and you can speak uh on april 6th as well so we'll get you all more information thank you for watching subscribe join share and like from the city center we are out